Welcome to Between Classes, the South Dakota State University podcast about jackrabbit life. Today, we're talking with Hafid Satyanto. Welcome, Hafid. Tell us a little bit about you. Hello, everyone. I am a junior mechanical engineering student. I was born in Indonesia, but I've lived most of my life outside my birth country. Um, I've moved to Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, and then I moved to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, and then I came here in the spring of 2016. Glad, glad that you made it here. Yes, <laughs> me too. So tell me a little bit about when you arrived in the spring, because arriving for the spring semester would mean you got here in like December or January. Yes. Yeah. And the weather is really cold then. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy cold. <laughs> um, when I first came here, you know, like, like I've seen snow before, but not this much snow. Um, but I guess like it's fine. You know, the weather, you just put on another different layer. Not a lot of people go to university in the spring, especially international students. So my experience at international student, student orientation is only around like 25 other international students. And, you know, like they did a very good job with like introducing, hey, you know, like this, there's this thing on campus, there's this service here, and here's what we can do for you. But right after that first orientation week, I was kind of lost in that, well, I'm, I live on campus, I know that, but where is, you know, Matthews Hall? Where, where do I check in? Like, what is a CA? I don't know anything about that, and I didn't even know the complete dining options on campus, which was pretty funny. Um, the first few, well, the first week here, I just used Larson Commons because I thought that was the only dining option here on campus. Before I, real, I realized, you know, like, hey, you know, like there's Panda Express, there's like Einstein's, there's Chick-fil-A here, and I'm like, whoa, you know, like, look at all these fast food that I can buy. So you had mentioned that um, in addition to dining, mm -hmm. you, you weren't sure where your residential hall was, you weren't yeah. quite sure how to check in. W were you able to find somebody who could yeah. help guide you? <laughs> oh, okay, good. Yeah, that, there's a funny story. Um, so in the international student orientation, there are uh, student volunteers who volunteer as, like, orientation leaders. And one of the um, volunteers, her name was Hiba, and she was also a CA in Caldwell Hall. And she was like, yeah, you know, like, here's what a CA does. Here's the residential halls. And I, and I was like, oh, yeah, I, where is Matthew's Hall? Like, how do I check in? You know, like, how do I know which room I'm in? So during the first check-in process, like, she guided me over to my room. You know, she checked in and she introduced me to the hall. So I did eventually find my way <laughs> to the residential hall. And it was, it was a pretty good experience for me to have someone to guide me through the process. So, yeah. Excellent. I'm glad it was a positive experience. Yes. So that first uh, first couple of weeks or even first semester that you were on campus, how did you go about meeting new people? I mean, I, I assume that you met new people. How did that process go for you? When I first uh, stepped into the residential hall, you know, I only had a suitcase and literally just a paper bag with all my clothes in it. So, you know, I came to America with no friends. Like, I had no contacts here at SDSU. It was like a totally clean slate. The first day when classes started, I just knocked on people's door on my floor. I lived on first floor Matthews, and I was like, hey, my name is Hafid, I'm from Indonesia, where are you from, you know? Because I thought that was just the normal thing to do. And yeah, I did meet a bunch of like really, really interesting people, and I thought, you know, um, these are the people that I'll be with as I live my university life. So I made some good friends during the first weeks here, which was pretty nice. I'm really glad to hear that. So you're a junior now. You've yes. definitely acclimated to being on campus. Have you joined any clubs or organizations or anything like that? Uh, yeah. So um, currently, I lead the student organization called the SD State CubeSat team. Our main, like, overarching goal is to build our own uh, CubeSat from the ground up. And what, I'm sorry to interrupt you, what is a CubeSat? What is, is that an acronym? Does it mean something? What is that? Uh, yeah, so a CubeSat, it's basically a cubic like satellite. So think of satellites in space, but think of it as a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter cube. There's different unit sizes, so sometimes it's 30 by 10, 40 by 10, etc. Okay. Okay. But the main goal of what, the, the reason why people are going to this CubeSat or making their own CubeSat is it is extremely cheap in comparison to like millions of dollars worth of like satellite. What this allows people to do is 
It allows um, high school students, university students, professors, small businesses to send experiments, to send, you know, what they're trying to do now is they're trying to blanket the world with a bunch of CubeSats to um, provide high-speed internet. Like, those are the stuff like you can do. CubeSats are one of the ways you can increase the access to space. And what our student organization do is we're trying to build all the technology from the ground up. So we're building the sensors, we're building the computers, we're building the frames, you know, the control, the communications, uh, the radio communications between um, from the ground up pretty much. It sounds like as a mechanical engineering student, that'd be a really fun and, and even educational group to be involved in. So have you, um, have you done any launches? Have you had, have you had a few? Yeah, uh, so far we've had four. The first one um, was success, second one was success, the third one was a partial success, the fourth one um, we did it for the Girl Scouts and it was pretty funny, it was totally unexpected. Uh, so the weather was pretty bad and we tried launching it off the ground but then the grass and the bushes were extremely cold so the leaves were really sharp and suddenly there was this huge, huge gust of wind that totally toppled the entire balloon to a bush which, you know, like, it was very thin and it just exploded, <laughs> you know, just like randomly. You have these like 20 or 30 Girl Scouts just watching, you know, they're braving the cold, they're watching outside, you know, oh, they're like, goodness. oh, you're gonna launch a balloon, it's awesome. And then, poof, you know, it's just like, the balloon just explodes. So, yeah, that was an interesting uh, launch, but we are making progress on our radio and sensor technology meanwhile, and we're going to launch our next balloon like this semester, so. Excellent, yes. excellent. <laughs> so um, how, how often do you get, I mean, I would imagine you meet regularly throughout mm -hmm. the semester, and then what if somebody wanted to get involved in CubeSat, what should they do? Uh, they should contact the mechanical engineering department and ask about, hey, you know, I heard about this club, like how do I uh, join it? And they'll point you in the right direction for that. As for meeting times, like it does change depending on the student members, you know, the even me, you know, like my schedule changes per semester. So mm -hmm. we, we work around the student schedules in the, in the club, so yeah. Great, that sounds like a, a really fun thing to participate yeah, in and, yeah, and get definitely. a lot of great hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. Yep, and, Excellent. and recently we're also starting this new rocket redivision too. So we are trying to make our own rocket engines and trying to launch our own like model rockets. So that should also be a fun thing to do on the side too. Absolutely. Look forward to hearing more about that in the future. Yes. So Hafid, I'm curious, do you have any advice for either current jackrabbits or future jackrabbits? I have friends back where I came from, but then I came here, it's a totally clean slate. Um, I had pretty much no community, like it was like zero friends, zero anyone, but you know, after my freshman year, after my sophomore year, and now I'm a junior now, I've built, I've slowly built a group of people who I call friends, I call support, supporters, you know, professors, um, who really care about what you do. I guess my advice is, you know, it doesn't really matter where you come from. What matters is what you do with your time here, because as I realize, you know, I came here with nothing essentially, but I realized that as you slowly expand your social circle, you know, um, you get this sense of recipro reciprocity that you want to give back to your community. Ever since I came here, um, I didn't even know what a CA was, but then I became a CA. I became an, an international like student orientation leader, and that feeling of giving back to the community, of influencing other people's lives for the better, like there is nothing like that and I encourage all new potential like jackrabbits you know it doesn't really matter where you come from it matters the impact that you leave behind after you graduate and it really matters what you do with your time here as a college student in this phase of your life I guess. That is really great <laughs> advice Hafid. Well thank you for joining us today and sharing your experience at State. This is Between Classes. Thank you for listening.